Vice Principal, Mr. K. J. Devasya, Coordinator of Academics, Mr. A. K. Das, Coordinator of Activities, Ms. Shobha Miranda, members of staff, <coughs> and my dear students. I welcome you all to the session today on careers in hospitality. Is the word hospitality merely about friendly and generous reception and the entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers? Not at all. Over the decades, it has become a full-fledged industry and has integrated innumerable career opportunities. To give us an insight and guide our students, we have with us Mr. Sandeep Chatterjee, an eminent multifaceted personality. Of course, an alumnus of St. Xavier Delhi from batch 1990. He's a scholar having completed his graduation in management from I. Chandi. He went on to do his master. He and he has recently submitted his thesis to IGNU for a PhD in hospitality and tourism. He is an accomplished hotelier. His most recent achievement is the best research paper award, which he received at 10th India International Hotel Travel and Research Conference organized by Banaras Institute of Hotel Management, New Delhi. He is an author, co author of many books on a variety of topics like food tourism, local cuisine, culinary tourism. Hi, sir. Hi, Sandeep, sir. As a hospitality trainer, he has trained professionals across various fields, including the death in Indian service. He not only had long consultant for food and beverage industry in New Jersey, USA. It is indeed an honor to have you amidst us, Mr. Chatterjee. With your wealth of knowledge, experience, and expertise, the students considering a career in hospitality will be highly motivated. Students, please feel free to ask your questions by typing in the chat box. Over to you, Mr. Chatterjee. I welcome you once again amongst our midst. Thank you, Kusum, ma'am. Uh, it was very flattering to hear things from you. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great to be uh, talking to... In fact, it's like going back to my school. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my alma mater, Sanjeeva School, Delhi. Uh, I'm here because of my school. So a very big thank you to the school for everything. Uh, thank you to Principal Father Joe's, Rector Father Joe's Philip, uh, Vice Principal Mr. Devasya, uh, Mr. Das, uh, I hope he's there. Uh, and uh, thank you to uh, yes. Shubha, uh, ma'am. Das, sir, how, how are you? I, I'm fine, you Sanjeev. You? How are you? Nice to see you. E equals to MC square. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> back, Sandeep. <laughs> nice, nice. So nice to see you after so long. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you. You have not changed at all. <laughs> you just well, look the same. You scare me even now. <laughs> Please stop scaring me. <laughs> so, okay. Best wishes. All the best for today. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, of course, thank you to Prabhjit Ma'am and uh, Dr. Sam. Kusum Ma'am, thank you so much. Uh, where do I start? Let me start with uh, sharing a little bit about my one-day years, about my school, about my time in school. And uh, what I remember about St. Xavier School is that I have, I have uh, completed uh, 12, 13 years in the school. I've been here from nursery. And I remember my first teacher was uh, Mrs. Beckwith. Yes. Mrs. Beckwith, uh, she was one lady. I came from a background which was not really uh, affluent, you can say, not even uh, middle class. Uh, but, uh, and 
English was definitely not a language which we would speak at home. Neither do we speak it now. But St. Xavier's was St. Xavier's and I had to learn English and Mrs. Beckwith was my English teacher. And I still remember her. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, of course, later on, uh, there have been a lot of influences in my life. Uh, the assembly, seeing Mr. Miranda in assembly all the time, always cheerful. Our principal, Brother Etu, he was always smiling, encouraging, uh, just love those days. Mrs. Bhargava's Hindi classes were great and uh, I learned so much from her. She had a way with, of teaching which uh, I still aspire to emulate. But there's one faculty which I must talk to you about is uh, Mr. Moses DeMello. See, I was a very shy student. Uh, in my junior classes and even in my senior classes. So when Mr. Demolo came up with the program of public speaking, I was petrified because I was the first speaker who was nominated because I was the quietest, probably the quietest student in the class. So I was nominated to be the speaker who had to speak extempore for a minute. And I can tell you that minute changed my life completely. It gave me the confidence. It gave me the motivation to do things, to see things differently, to see myself differently. And so I'm always in debt to him. Thank you, Mr. DeMello, wherever you are. And uh, so, I, so I was a student, uh, uh, you can say not a bright student, a mediocre, less than mediocre student probably, who did quite okay in his 10th standard. So I thought that why not let me get into science. And then <coughs> Mr. Das and company showed me what science is. <laughs> it's not that, it's that uh, maybe I was not cut out for it. Uh, my interests varied and my academics percentage also dropped in 11th standard. And later on, I got an interest into hotel management. It also was a chance uh, that I visited one of the hotels in Delhi. In fact, it was the uh, Taj Palace, the lobby of Taj Palace. I just went inside, I just saw the place and I was mesmerized. I said, who stays here? Who works here? I mean, this place is great. And that's it, I started finding out how do I go about it. I did my hotel management. I completed my hotel management. And after that, I joined the hotels. I joined uh, JP Hotels. I was fortunate to get through my campus uh, placements. And from there on, it was just hard work, hard work, hard work. And 10 years just passed by and I didn't know. And uh, I was suddenly in middle management. I was running a restaurant. And uh, then I said, no, it's not going anywhere. I need to join another company. So I moved on. I came down two ranks. I joined as a supervisor in the hotel. Uh, it was a new hotel that time called the Radisson. And uh, I was in their pre-opening team. I worked with them again for a few years. And later on, I, when I was again in the middle management, I was running their food and beverage. I said, my calling is something different. I need to go for training and placement probably. So I had an interest in training. And that's when I switched my career again. And I moved to academics. I moved to Bangalore, actually. There was a call from a, a very famous college in Bangalore called the MS Ramaya College. And they called me, they wanted somebody with experience, but they wanted somebody with education too. And unfortunately, my education by the time was only that of a hotel management graduate because in the industry, they never asked me to 
do anything rather than other than giving my hard work so i started learning i enrolled into my masters i did my masters in uh, tourism and hotel management then i did my i said why stop there i did my mphil after that i finished my mphil from madurai kamraj university and then after doing my mphil i moved back to delhi i was and started teaching in a college called banarsi das chandiwala institute it's part of the ip university it's one of the renowned colleges in delhi and i was fortunate to have been a professor there for 5 years a uh, great experience great learning from there and after that i enrolled into my phd and i was able to submit my thesis and i'm just awaiting for my convocation which is delayed thanks to covid so fingers crossed on that and uh, meanwhile a uh, couple of years back i moved to us and uh, in fact it's all, almost 3 years now uh, that i moved to us and uh, i started off uh, with a consultancy here i in food and beverage i have a local partner with me uh, a chef uh, and we basically design restaurants uh, we plan menus for uh, hotels restaurants uh, we are working on a project on food trucks at the moment so that's what is going on uh, that's about my journey and uh, now if it's okay i will like to show you a bit of a presentation which i have for you uh, let me see please give me a minute it's opening i hope it's visible to everybody all right so just settle in what i'm planning to do is uh, tell you about how to get into the uh, hospitality industry can you see this beautiful hotel everybody does anybody know what hotel is this the marina bay sands in singapore one of the hotels which can singapore. really inspire you on the singapore. career path yeah it's in singapore somebody said right it's correct uh my journey i have already told you the some of the pics uh, from my journey uh that's me taking classes with the swiss students in lausanne i was invited by call the hotel in lausanne in switzerland to take classes for them uh this is my work in new york at a restaurant and right down there is a class which i was taking uh for the indian foreign service students at on the behest of the taj group of hotels uh, i was training our foreign service people on dining because they need to uh entertain people on behalf of our country okay enough about me do you know them of course you know Look, them vikas khanna is vikas chef vikas khanna of course chef vikas khanna and sanjeev kapoor that chef sanjeev kapoor excellent uh so people know hospitality mostly these days because of uh, the chefs these great people who have made us proud but hospitality is little more than that 
that. And of course, they're not the only ones. They are the real chefs who made us proud and so many others like that. But there is also Hollywood and Bollywood, right? So Amitabh Bachchan. Oh yeah, everybody knows him. <laughs> uh, and Chef Ali uh, Khan. And, yes, yes, yes. You all know them. And of course, you will know that there has been a boom in the industry after uh, what we what I call the Master Chef phenomenon. I'm sure most of you must have followed Master Chef series. Yes, sir. And the Indian series series. Yes, which in, has inspired a lot of youngsters to join hospitality and to be chefs. More importantly, but now do you know him? Anybody? No, sir. Nobody knows him. Yes, sir. He is the CEO of Oyo Rooms. What's his name? Rakesh Agrawal. He is Ritesh Agrawal. Oh, Great sorry, for sir. For people who know, no problem. So Ritesh Agrawal. He is the CEO and founder of Oyo Rooms. Now his is also a journey of hospitality, as much as the journey of those great chefs with whom you saw. And he is a boy who started selling SIM cards at the age of 13, and then went on to create this brand Oyo, uh, which was at one point a three billion dollar brand, right now cut in size to one billion dollars. But still, he was the he is the youngest. self-made billionaire in the world so people like them can also inspire you sky is the limit like i say so now coming to the industry itself what is hospitality people ask me now hospitality is not a separate universe separate industry it's actually a conjoined industry with three other different elements two other elements to it that's travel tourism and hospitality so tourism is the bigger concept and then you have travel and hospitality on the side now what are these so tourism is basically planning so you plan you develop a place you market a destination say for example delhi is a destination okay or or new york is a destination or mumbai or shimla or shanghai is a destination so so people are there to plan this destination plan the attractions in this destination then there is travel on the other side the travel includes uh, airlines cruise liners trains buses luxury and what not and then in the middle is the hospital that involves the hotels restaurants event management catering banquets so in all we call it the hospitality and tourism industry which actually widens your scope that much now the main question is why hospitality just why well don't get bogged down by this chart it's just something i took from uh, un wto that's the united nations world tourism organization and according to them till 2019 18 that's the last record they have the south, south asian in south asia that includes india had a tourist arrival which increased by 90% and tourist receipts by 10%. Tourism is 7% of total exports globally. So that's 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 huge. And 29% of the total of the service sectors. And as you can see there has been a 9 years of cons- consecutive growth in the industry of uh, hospitality. And obviously there is a decline now because of the covid and that is going to happen definitely going to happen but it's a resilient industry and we are hoping that it will come back in numbers if you see in globally every one in 5 person every one in 5 is somebody who's working in the who's working in the hospitality industry globally uh, if you if i talk about india we got 2.5 million people working here in this industry uh, a huge boost to our gdp 6.23% 
8.73% of employment and a growth of 14% till 2019 and then a dip, of course. So now coming to the main part, what is hotel management? Where do you fit in? So hotel management is a program which includes, which trains you to become a manager and ultimately the top boss, the general manager of the hotel. And there are four distinct operational areas in hotels. So you have the front office, you have the food production, you have the food and beverage service, you have the housekeeping. Sir, I understand of all of them. You understand or you don't understand? Sir, I understood. Excellent, excellent. I'm sure there are many who do not know what they are. Uh, so we'll, we'll just see. Uh, in one line, I'll just explain. I think the photographs are enough. Food and beverage service is service of food and beverage. Uh, housekeeping is the upkeep of the property. Uh, food production is where the chefs go. Okay, that's, what the, that's where the chefs work. And the front office is the front of the house where you meet people, you check in them, you do the hotels and all that. Now, who will hire me? That's the big moot question. So the main thing where mostly every hotel management graduate gets hired, which is a three-year program, of course, is the hotel chains in India. And there are many good hotel chains in India, like the Oberoi, the Taj Group, ITC, Leela, Lalit Group. There are global hotel chains like the JW Marriott, Hilton, Hyatt, uh, Radisson, Holiday Inn. Apart from that, if you are only interested in restaurants, you can even join restaurant chains like uh, Obopin, Starbucks, Light Food, McDonald's, any one of them. You may even want to join the, the wider industry, the tourism industry where you can join the uh, travel and tourism, you can join the Delhi airport, for instance, the GMR group hires people, hotel management, they're working there. Uh, Pony holidays and other travel agencies, cruise liners, although cruise liners prefer people who have some experience in the field. Um, now coming to corporate facilities, you do not uh, need to join hotels. You can even join an MNC. In fact, every large multinational company in the world employs hospitality professionals in what, is the, what they call as uh, facility management. It's a complete set of department altogether where they look after the accommodation, uh, food and beverage, and other aspects, transport for the staff. Hospitals, you know these days hospitals are no less than five-star hotels. You must have seen them. And they have executive chefs, they have food courts, they have kitchens, and they need you. Customer service, any place that has customer service, they will require you, BPOs, banks, all of them. Government jobs, the armed forces, railways, tourism boards, they all hire people from the management. So what is the advantage of doing this course as opposed to any other course? Well, the first advantage and the biggest advantage is that it's open to all streams. You may be a science student, you may be a commerce student, you may be an art student, but you can join hotel management. You don't need a special, special knowledge for it. And second and the most important thing, I think is that it's a life skill. It teaches you. It teaches you a life skill. It teaches you how to talk, how to groom yourself, how to behave, how to interact with people, how to impress people. And it's a lifelong career. And even if you change the career, you take your skills along with you. So the skills really come handy all your life. Then a chance to work abroad, that interests a lot of people. It never interested me though. And I ended up here, but uh, 
for a lot of people, it's important that they want to see the world. I love to see the world too. Uh, and you get a lot of chance when you're from hospitality sector to go abroad, work there. Flexibility to switch your career. Now, hotel management is basically customer service, specialized customer service. So you can move from hotels to aviation, customer service, retail, banking, insurance, just about any sector, if you feel like. Of course, there are. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm I'm interrupting you. But what's better for uh, hotel management, the government institution or the private ones? Yeah, I'll come to that. I, I have a slide on that. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll just go on to the disadvantages now. So, the first thing is, of course, the long working hours. See, the the working hours are really long, and they are hard working hours. I must tell you, there have been days in the in. I have cried myself to sleep for the hard work and for the long hours. So you have to be ready for it. There's no shortcut to that. Working on weekends and holidays, I'll tell you, I am a people person. And when I joined the industry, I was very disappointed that I was working on Holi, I was working on Diwali, I was working on Christmas. When all my friends were enjoying, I was working. So you have to bear that in mind. It can put you off. The third point puts off lot of many people, lower salaries to begin with. If you compare to other industries, yes, the salaries are lower to begin with in this industry. There are many reasons for it. Let's not get into that. But the fact is, and the good part is that you start earning more once you cross at least the three-year barrier. In fact, nowadays it's the two-year barrier. So once you cross the two-year of hardship of all this, the hard work and the holidays and weekends doesn't change, okay? You still work, but your salaries and everything improves. So keep that in mind. Now, am I cut out for it? So let's see, what do you need? You need to have some interest in food and lifestyle. I'm sure most of you have. In communication skills, it's good to get into a good institution. But this course also helps you in developing it. I didn't have a great communication skills when I was in school, honestly speaking. Although, thanks to Mr. DeMello and everybody, uh, my English teachers, I got a little bit of boost in confidence. My English was always there thanks to the school, but uh, communication skills is more than your language. It's your confidence. Friendly and outgoing personality. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, analytical skills and logical reasoning. Now, now it's, you have to be a little smart also in this program. Uh, it's not that it's for dumb people too. So there will be an entrance exam and you will have some questions on analytical skills and logical reasoning to crack through the entrances. Uh, organizing ability and an eye for detail, that helps. And most importantly, their networking skills. And networking means keeping in touch with everybody, with your friends, people you like and people you don't like, okay? so. Now in your school, you have a huge batch of 2020. How many do you know? I was very poor at that. I had just two friends. But right now, I have more than 100 friends in my school, thanks to this great organization called DOXA. You know about DOXA, right? DOXA is the uh, alumni, and they are the ones who got me into the grid. They brought me back, and here I must Thank uh, Mr. Mahindra Singh Dang, whom I call MSD, who, who got me into the group and who also invited me to there. So I'm here because of DOXA. Thank you, DOXA. Be in touch with them. Now, somebody had asked me which college to go to. Now, that's a very important slide. Uh, you want to take some notes here. Uh, with my teaching, uh, with my industry experience of 10 years and teaching of about 16 years, 
15, 16 years. I can tell you which is good, which is bad. Let's talk about goods. So there are many courses there. People will confuse you with BSc, BHM, BA, BA, hospitality, BA, MBA, and so that. But the best way to go is the one on top. It's BSc in hotel and hospital administration, which is done from National College of uh, National Council of Hotel Management and Catering Technology. Quite a long name, NCHMC, JEE. They have a joint entrance exam. That's the IHMs. They have, I think, more than 20 of them. If I'm not mistaken, 27 probably all over India. But here's the disclaimer. Not all the IHMs are same. My preference would be for IHM Delhi. Uh, my own IHM, uh, that is Chandigarh, which is uh, called the Dr. Ambedkar Institute of Hotel Management. IHM uh, Mumbai is very good. IHM Kolkata is good. Chennai is good. Bangalore is good. But Delhi is number one priority, I would say, if you can get it through your entrance exam. If that's, if that's the government college. Now, there are other options, of course. There is BHM from uh, Manipal, Baksha, it's from ITC. They have their own entrance exam. Uh, the third one on my list is a college where I was a professor. So uh, uh, I know that's a great place. And uh, I'm not just saying because I was teaching there. It's the Panasidas Chandiwala Institute and it's in Delhi, and it's from IPU University. So they also have a common entrance exam. You can look at that. BA honors from IHO Morangabad is a tough cookie, but if you can get in there, why not? And so is the OCLD, the Oberoi Center of Learning and Development. Yes, yeah, somebody's asking a question. Yeah, Hello, I think somebody's uh, mic is on. Yeah. All right. So, so these are some of the colleges, like I told you. Uh, I would prefer the government college, IHMs, followed so by. Sorry to interrupt you, but I want to ask you some questions. Yeah, we'll take the questions at the end. You have something very urgent you can ask. Go shoot. So I want to ask that if we take our entrance exam from hotel manager management from IHM Aurangabad, then we will be directly get the job in Taj Group. No, they don't guarantee a job in Taj Group. Uh, it's, it's a program like anybody else. Uh, you have to give an interview again. But uh, there is a good chance that you might get into the Taj group. That's that much I can say. That answers your question. Um, uh, yes, hello, sir. hi Thank sir. You. Hi sir, again. So, uh, what are the fee structure for them? Then okay, I am not getting into the fee structure, but I can tell you generally for uh, BSc, BHM, and uh, BCHM CD from Chandiwala, the fee structures are about a lakh of rupees or less than that for a year. That's the fee structure in India. Uh, a ballpark figure I'm telling you, don't quote me on that. Please check the individual websites for the fees. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. So let's move on from the hotel management colleges. It's clear. Uh, IHM top priority. You can also go in for Vaksha. You can go in for uh, Chandiwala. These are all good colleges. Any one of them. Now, specifically, some people want to just be chefs and they may not want to do the entire hotel management course because in a hotel management course, uh, you choose any one of the stream and then you become a general manager or higher. So if you just want to be a chef, you really don't need to do the hotel management course. You can also do a culinary course. And the best institute to do it from is a, institute, a very old institute in Hyderabad. It's called the Culinary Academy of India. They have a tough entrance exam. I know their principal, uh, but it's the best. And I can guarantee you. 
there is also the certificate program there and they have a full bachelor's program from the CAI. Apart from that, IHN Pusa in Delhi also has their own craft courses. Uh, there is also a, a government uh, certificate program from the Indian Culinary Institute. They have two campuses in Noida and Tirupati. You can uh, enroll there as well. They are new, so I don't know much about them. Uh, there is also the STEP program of the Oberoi's, they, which is a graduate program. Uh, and it is basically like a step. So again, the, the Oberoi group doesn't guarantee you a job, but uh, it grooms you for working in Oberoi's. And then you also have a Taj program, the Taj Aurangabad, they also have this culinary program. But if you're really interested in the culinary arts, and you just think that chef is the way to go. I don't want to be a hotel manager. I don't want to be a general manager. Uh, uh, then why not? Or you want to open your own uh, bakery or something, or you want to open your own restaurant, your own business, then I would say CAI is the way to go. Now, what's my career progression after I do my three year of hotel management? So you get a degree after your 12th standard, you do your hotel management for three years you get a degree and then there is a career progression. So initially everybody starts at the entry level, the front office executive say in the front office and moves on to a supervisor, the lobby manager, the revenue manager and the front office manager. Now here comes the crux. So you can also have a parachute and you can jump like this boy in between. He's a management trainee. So if you get selected as a management trainee from your campus, you can become an assistant lobby manager. So that gives you an elevator to success rather than taking a stairs. So that's something to keep in mind. Same way in housekeeping, you start with an attendant, you become a floor supervisor, assistant, housekeeper, and then an executive housekeeper. And of course, if you, can crack your management training program. You are on a fast track. You join as an assistant housekeeper probably. Same in food and beverage service. You start as an FNB associate, then a captain, a restaurant manager, and then a director or a manager of food and beverage. But if you're a management trainee, you can start off right at the assistant restaurant management level. In food production, in kitchen, you start off as commie or cooks, cook three, cook two, cook one, you become a station chef, or they call it the chef de party, then you become a sous chef or a section chef, and then ultimately you become the big boss, the executive chef of the hotel. Management training, kitchen management training is very difficult to crack, but many people do crack it. And once you can crack it, you can be somewhere in between the CDB and the sous chef place yourself very comfortably over there. Excuse me, sir. Sorry for interrupting you. I have a question, sir. Yes. Bars and swimming pools come in which category? Food production? Bars and swimming pool, they come under f &B service, food and beverage service. All the bars, restaurants, banquets, room service, any, anywhere where food and beverage is served is an f and service. So, but being a head of department is not enough. Like somebody said, life is no limits except the ones you make. So you start here as a head of department, but then you can move on. You become a director of food and beverage, director of sales. Then you become a resident manager, which is like uh, an assistant general manager. Then you become a general manager. He's a big boss of the hotel. He is the last person you look up to. And then above them, uh, a group of hotels would be a vice president of operations looking after a group of hotels, maybe a regional vice president looking after South Asia or uh, APAC or other places. And then of course you have the big boss, the CEO of the company. Now, I'm sure a lot of people want to go abroad and want to try out the global hospitality schools they are expensive, yes, but they are the best. 
and uh, some of them there are many 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 and i have curated uh, some of them which you can take down if you're interested one is called ecole hotelier de lausanne or ehl in switzerland that is cornell university in new york there's william hara college in vegas there is ozan college in central florida again in us there is la roche which is in switzerland so these are some of them if you are not able to take them right now with me i'll i have already shared my presentation to prajot nan uh prajit nan can share it with you don't worry about that i'll also share my email address so that sir? you people can contact me uh sir uh, hi again varun this uh, varun singh this side so can't we take yes, part in uh, so can't we take part in like a student exchange program like they provide us if they provide us such a student exchange program uh, may be possible but then uh, it depends on which college and what student program most of the colleges these days have student pro exchange programs all right uh thank you so uh, sir uh, i have one more uh, question uh, so may i sir yeah please ask Oh, okay. Thank you so much. So, uh, isn't it uh, uh, risky for a single individual for being in a uh, uh, being specialized in a single uh, program session like food production or uh, F and B department like pastry? It's not risky, uh, Varun. It's not risky. I got your question. The point is how passionate are you? Some people are pa passionate about uh, uh, being chef only. So for them, I think it's a great thing. But if you're not sure. like i wasn't sure whether i wanted to be a chef or a restaurant manager or a general manager or into housekeeping so so i took hotel management and during my course i i found out uh, what's where 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 are my strengths okay now coming to the uh, global schools for people who want sir, to be chef so i want to ask something yes yes sir so what is the fee structure of the las vegas uh, ihm school Okay, uh, if you want to know about the fee structures, I will tell you a ballpark figure. In India, I told you it's about a lakh a year, so basically four lakhs for the entire course. Uh, if you come to international colleges, you multiply it by thirty. Apparently, yes. So uh, it's 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 like thirty lakhs per annum in Indian currency. uh it's quite a lot but yes they give you a qualification which can uh possibly make you work globally so that's something we will have to consider all right okay so i am finishing with uh, this and uh thank you very much for listening to me i hope i didn't bore you and i gave you something uh, which was useful to you now you have a question for me please so i want to ask that can we do all the courses that all four courses that are provided in your uh, presentation so hotel management has all the four courses hotel management yeah. is all the four courses yeah. all together So sir okay oh thank you sir thank you all right yes sir thank you very much indeed that's quite well uh, um, an elaborate i am sure uh, the whole information was very fruitful and very knowledgeable for the students um i'm sure i'm sure that the food for thought as to how to raise the bar and become an accomplished name in hospitality business uh the questions uh, the way the students have shown enthusiasm i'm sure um they were very keen to join course and they were very keen to take up this profession so um there are just a few more questions if it's okay uh, can i ask sure. please. Please, please there's another please. one that says here that uh, is there a single degree or a course that is sufficient that can direct a student towards a career or opportunity all over the world 
is there a single degree or a course there is single degree see i'll tell you the course is single there is only the hotel management course that's that's these days a a four year degree program uh, from ihm or any of the private colleges uh, but i'll tell you honestly this course if you do it from india it's great for india you will have to uh, you will have to enhance your qualification when you are working abroad so that's that's that uh, in the sense that you can join abroad there is no nothing special about the courses which are being done abroad but it's always better to add on to your qualification after you have finished your hotel management from india but uh, uh, it's my personal opinion i'm sure the parents will also agree whenever the students are contemplating a, a course in uh, hotel management our talented youngsters they would rather head for some foreign uh, university uh, like australia or new zealand or some other foreign country rather than you know joining some course in india from indian institutions aren't indian institutions at par with any other renowned universities indian so, institutions are at par lacking. indian institutions are at par and especially the ones which i told you are are, are really at par uh, with international standards but uh, there is something which are very specific country specific see certain things like food laws of the country okay uh, the customs and traditions of that place those are very country specific so if you are say for example interested in working only in australia for instance so your hotel management course is pretty good okay but you can just add on maybe an additional certification course from there to augment your learning that's what i'm saying uh, there's another question here um, there's a lot of emphasis on health and wellness and it's by more uh, is so after covid is over unlocking spots all over the world so how has this fact made an impact on hospitality business uh emphasis on health and wellness the emphasis of health and wellness has had a positive impact on the industry as uh, there are of course the the health package is the health tourism which is there it's a big sector in india so we have people coming from all over the globe uh, coming in to learn yoga coming into uh coming to kerala for uh, learning uh, <clears throat> ayurvedic therapies and things like that okay so so it's a, it's a huge sector it's a huge sector in india and uh, one that will only grow and now the second part of the question is about covid covid is definitely not good for hospitality it's not good for any industry so if you're not traveling obviously there is no tourism there is no hospitality Post the thing COVID, is that uh, It's yeah. post covid what the scenario is going to be definitely it's going to uh, come up once again see the, like i i am an optimist and i i tell you what uh, this this is an industry which is 500 year old and and we have we have seen the 1917 uh, spanish flu we have seen two world wars uh, we have seen 911 we have seen uh, terrorist attacks on mumbai we have seen so many things happening and this industry has always bounced back it's the resilience of the industry i'll tell you why because ultimately people cannot be forced to stay at home ultimately they would want to go out and 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 there is a uh, there's a bent up demand once you once you keep people inside now i'll tell you what's happening in us certain states have opened and the problem is it's a difficulty to keep people indoors it's not the difficulty to take people out so so it will come back i'm sure next year is going to be very different there's another question here uh, do you think the ancient indian tradition of welcoming the guest as god ati devo bhava absolutely absolutely uh, i'll i'll tell you what uh, the concept of hospitality and why it's so relevant in india is that we are born with the concept of hospitality i mean हमारे घर में कोई भी आता है तो सबसे पहली चीज क्या करते हैं एक ग्लास पानी तो देते हैं वेलकम करते हैं ओके सो दैट्स व्हाट हॉस्पिटैलिटी इज वी 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 ट्रीट वी ट्रीट आर गेस्ट लाइक गॉड 
for a foreigner he's a customer for an indian he's always a guest so so that's why foreigners love the indian hospitality and uh, and it comes naturally to us yeah that's true hello i think we have lost the connection uh, it's okay Back in. Continue, uh, should we? Yeah. Yeah. So one more question here, Mr. Patel. A scholar and a hotel, best of both. So these tales, uh, if uh, these are schools or conferences, those who are Korean hospitality and tourism. Ma'am, the audio is not clear. I'm not. I'm not getting the question. Could you type it for me? Is it possible? All right, I'll do that. It's. Uh, thank there's, you. There's an. There's an echo. I don't know why there's an echo. Thank you, sir, for answering all my questions. I thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, Varun Singh, this yes. time again. Yes, so, sir. Uh, did this uh, did this uh, coronavirus pandemic will affect our uh, like uh, 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 style of living and the infrastructure of hotel management industry? Things will change, and uh, honestly, Varun, uh, nobody really knows. but i can tell you from a fact that uh, people are definitely going to go out people are going to travel so uh, it is just a matter of time i think in a year's time thankfully you still have a year's time and then four more years in your college so don't worry about that so much thank you so much sir thanks So do you own any restaurant in New York? No, I don't own any restaurant. Uh is that Divya, right? Yeah. Yeah, good evening. Uh, <laughs> good evening, good evening. Uh I I I am a consultant. I I actually consult people who are about to open their restaurants uh and their food and beverage businesses. So I help them out. I plan their menus, I design for them. That's kind of work I do right now. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks. hello sir so uh, there was a little technical error on the side of kusum ma'am so i'll be taking over from here so uh, i think it's uh, all right it's working now um, at the time us only in my mrs divya madhav um, to propose a vote of thanks okay thank you kusum ma'am so uh, good evening everyone and a very pleasant morning to you sir thank you good evening uh, rather to you <laughs> yes <laughs> so it's an honor and privilege for me to propose a vote of thanks to you right now sir and um, thank you so much for first of all answering most of the questions of the students online itself and um, so i would just move ahead so i on behalf of the entire zaverian family sir i extend a heartfelt gratitude uh, to you and thanks to you uh, for uh, you know taking over to this session and uh, blessing us with your presence and valuable spending your valuable time from your busy schedule to help our students gain insight and understanding uh, into the vibrancy of the hospitality industry so your achievements and uh, achievements are an inspiration to all of us and it is like a feather on the cap that we wear with great pride so thank you so much uh, for accepting uh, this invitation from our side to be a part of this uh, webinar and sharing your knowledge for the upcoming zaverians of our school 
It was lovely to see, sir, that how you vividly remember the intrinsic details about your school life. And I am sure that after watching your presentation, uh, that uh, students must have learned various things about the fields of, field of hospitality. And you have also put light upon a wide range of options that are available to them. Uh, the advantages, disadvantages of the courses that are available, uh, different colleges that are available to them. And after, uh, I'm sure that they can now, uh, there are after looking at the various possibilities that, that are available for them, uh, they will show keen interest into taking um, a wise decision about which career option to be chosen for them. Uh, Last but not the least, I would like to take up this opportunity to thank our principal, Father T.J. Jost S.J., Vice Principal, Mr. K.J. Devasya, Coordinator of Academics, Mr. A.K. Das, Coordinator of Activities, Mrs. Shobha Miranda, for arranging such an effective and fruitful session for all our students. And no program is successful without an audience. So I extend a big thank you to all those who took part in this webinar and made it a great experience for all. So once again, on behalf of all of us, I would like to thank you for sharing your precious thoughts with us. We have learned so much from you and we hope to learn more from you. Now is the time for us to end this session. And I would like to end the session with a thought provoking word, few words. People will forget what you said. They will forget what you did but people will never forget how you made them feel. Thank you and goodbye to all. Thank you so much, Tivya. And thank you, thank you Kusum ma'am. Thank you everybody. Uh, das sir, I can thank see you, you on and off. Thank you so much. This was indeed an enriching session. I'm sure the students have benefited a great deal today. Thank you very much. Thank you and, and best of luck for all the students. Thank Bye. you, Sandeep, and thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. It was a very nice. Thank day. you. Thank you, Dasar. Good to thank see you. Thank you very much. Bye. Very Bye. well. Thank you, Jupri. Goodbye thank and good luck. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you for spending your time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Devasya, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks once again. Take care. Bye. Bye.